A lot of the horror that spiders emit is due to how different they are from us. However, they are also incredibly different to basically all animals, including ones you would usually associate with them. For instance, unlike insects, they don't really have a head. Their body and head has been fused together into one structure, leaving horrifying eyes and fangs attached directly to spindly legs. Scientifically known as the cephalothorax, the structure that houses the body and head of arachnids. But the differences don't stop there. Their orb-like eyes work very differently to most other bugs, and they even have a different way of moving their legs that makes their movement especially creepy. This is because insects and spiders are not actually very closely related at all. They may have last had a common ancestor over 500 million years ago, which means that humans are more closely related to sharks than insects are to spiders. Spiders and arachnids had marine ancestors, and the story of their evolution can be traced back half a billion years ago on the sea floor to a small creature, maybe only a little larger than your thumb, named Molossonia planovenatrix. Tiny, but due to living at a time when most creatures were tiny, they probably would have been mighty predators, equipped with many sharp pointy appendages that helped them kill and consume their prey. Most noteworthy of these were the small claws just above its mouth, known as the chelicerae which would be inherited by all of its ancestors, including spiders, as this is where spiders' fangs come from, also known as chelicerae, as they aren't really fangs, they are actually a highly modified arthropod appendage. Molossonia planovenatrix was the common ancestor of the chelicerata. Named after their mouth appendages, the chelicerata are one of the major divisions of creatures that bear an exoskeleton, or arthropods which contain all the arachnids along with their marine animal relatives and ancestors. This includes some of these oceanic animals that survive to this day, like horseshoe crabs and sea spiders, and many that are now extinct, like Molossonia, but also a highly successful group of animals called Eurypterids, or sea scorpions. The Eurypterids were the top predators of their day, around 410 million years ago, and are the producers of one of the largest arthropods that has ever existed. Yacalopterus, that could grow to two and a half meters long. The Eurypterids were named sea scorpions, but the relation with true scorpions is only superficial, and they were not closely related. Spiders and scorpions and the other arachnids are actually all equally related to Eurypterids. Scorpions are just more primitive and have so retained more features from their more ancient relatives, so they just look more like sea scorpions than spiders and other arachnids. Eventually, the arachnids would make their way onto land. However, when and how they conquered land, or on how many occasions they hauled out of the water, is actually debated. Unlike land vertebrates that all descended from one lineage that adapted to thrive on dry land, the arthropods descended from many, and it is still actually undecided if even the arachnids descended from just one evolutionary event. The arachnids are divided into two subgroups, with spiders and ticks on one side, and scorpions along with some of their unsavoury close relatives like sun spiders on the other. It has been argued that these two groups may have actually descended from different lineages that came out of the water on separate occasions. Scorpions are considerably older than spiders, actually being some of the oldest fossils of creatures on land. The oldest confirmed scorpion lived around 430 million years ago in what would become Scotland, long before any vertebrate had made their tentative steps onto land. The habitat this creature occupied couldn't have been more unrecognisable to us today. There were no trees, and the moon was closer to the earth, imposing about 10% more space in the sky. It crawled through a land littered with small plants, with a smattering of tiny animals. Only a little later, around 410 million years ago, are when you see some of the earliest ancestors of spiders, known as the Trigona tobida that are not the direct ancestors, but an early stem from the spider family tree that branched away and became very successful around the time that creatures were first migrating onto land. Some of them looked more like ticks, and some more spider-like. However, they had retained certain primitive features from early arachnids. So by around 400 million years ago, the ancestors of scorpions and spiders had definitely split. But what's strange is that there were other scorpions that lived around the same time, that had feather-like structures that were very likely gills, suggesting they were at least partly adapted to aquatic environments, leading some to believe that scorpions may have descended from their own aquatic lineage. Adding to this, arachnids have a unique way of breathing. 
Unlike insects that diffuse oxygen directly into their body through openings, spiders actually have a specific organ for extracting oxygen from the air known as book lungs. Book lungs are a series of tissue structures that look similar to the pages of a book that absorb oxygen. They work a bit like gills, only they don't pump air around them and most species don't require any motion of the plates to function, and their benefit is just in increasing the surface area that can absorb oxygen. This could be taken as evidence that they all descended from one land-based common ancestor, seeing as they all evolved a similar looking apparatus for breathing after leaving the oceans, however scorpions have eight book lungs, whereas spiders only have two. They are also quite different in structure and have a different placement too. However, intricate study of the book lungs of spiders, scorpions and several other arachnid groups has found several clear similarities showing they could have inherited these from the same common ancestor. And so some of the ancient scorpions that are thought to be aquatic could have secondarily adapted to aquatic habitats. That is to say that they may have evolved from land scorpions and then re-evolved back to live underwater for at least some amount of time. The arachnid group actually have several unique features that differ them from insects, but even their close relatives. For instance, horseshoe crabs have compound eyes like insects, and study of their fossils show Eurypterids also had eyes like this. But spiders have camera eyes with a lens and a retina, sort of like human eyes, which gives them their spooky appearance. Also, scorpions and spiders have an incredibly unique way of moving where they actually move their legs using hydraulics. Animals like insects actually have muscles, whereas spiders only possess muscles to curl their leg inward, and in order to extend their leg outward, they have to pump blood creating pressure that pushes the limb outwards. And this is a lot of the reason why a spider's crawl is a lot more eerie than when insects move. Found in the mountains of New York is one of the oldest close relatives of spiders, named Atacopus. It was spider-sized, around 1cm long, and had a segmented abdomen, similar to those found on scorpions and other more primitive arachnids. Over time, these segments would fuse together, making a singular smooth abdomen, completing the spider's unique appearance. There is a family of primitive trapdoor spiders that still have a segmented abdomen, as they would have split away from the other spiders much earlier in their evolution, before this transition had completed. Atacopus also had a tail, and there are other fossils of spider-like animals with tails known from around this time with evidence that the ancestors of spiders probably had one too, but eventually lost it. In Myanmar, there is an incredibly large deposit of hundreds of small creatures perfectly preserved in amber that would have lived over 100 million years ago alongside the dinosaurs. In the amber, there are many spiders, but also a spider with a tail was discovered named Chimera rachne, showing these more primitive forms survived for a long time before their extinction. So spiders tend to be lumped in with other bugs, and although most people know they are a different group of animals, sometimes it is understated quite how distantly related and different they are as animals, and strangely, almost every difference that spiders have with the other arthropods seems to have just made them creepier. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here, and a special thanks goes to my long-term patron, Jay, for their continued support.